In this video, we're going to jump ahead. We're going to look at an important PHP thingamabob, something that you can use in your websites today. This thing I'm talking about is called a PHP include. PHP includes are a tool, a thingamabob, if you will, that's built into PHP that allows you to, in a nutshell, to insert code that you have stored in another page into your current page. It works and gives you the, and gives you the same advantages as linking to external CSS files where you have an external CSS file where you have all your CSS rules and then you simply link to it in your web pages. So this way you have one external CSS file that controls the style of all your pages in the site. Again, much in the same way, PHP includes, gives you the same capability but you can do with any type of code. So you could store in an external file HTML snippets and then you would use the include mechanism to insert that code in all your PHP pages. As many of you have probably figured out, include statements, well PHP includes, are a very powerful part of PHP and they're actually very easy to use. Includes are actually used in many different languages outside of PHP. You find includes used in things like ASP and Perl. These are all tools that are used to build dynamic pages and have nothing to do with PHP. The only reason I mention them is because they too have includes. And the reason being is because it's just such a great tool to use. So let's get into using PHP includes and we'll start with some simple examples and we'll look at some of the variations. I've opened up Dreamweaver here and uh, I just want to show you a couple files. First of all I have my footer.include.php file. This is the actual file that I'm going to include into another page. So let's look at the code. As you can see looking at the code it's actually, it's text and some HTML and it's simply a footer link, uh, excuse me, it's simply a footer that would appear on the bottom of the page. And th in this case, this is the actual footer that I use in the killerphp.com website. And I've included something a little extra here. I've actually included some PHP code in our file and I basically created a variable and given it a value of fish, which is a text string, of course. You'll notice that the PHP include doesn't include any other code, or HTML or anything, so I don't have a body tag. And I don't need to do that because the file that's going to include this code, this code here, will actually be the main HTML page, if you will, or the main PHP page. So let's jump to that right now. So here's my page, uh, my underscore page.php. This is the actual page that people are going to be seeing. It's a very simple page. I just put the uh, title of PHP includes. And in here, I've included, and here, well, I'm going to back up a bit. We have our HTML code here, of course. And what I've done is here's our PHP script block. And we've seen this before. This is the print function. So here's the include statement. It's very simple. You have the word include, and you have the name of the file that you want to include into your current page. In this case, it's footer.include.php. Include statements have to respect paths as uh, just like when you link to an external style sheet, you have to respect paths. So in this case, footer.include.php, if I scroll over here, is on the same level as my page. So we have mypage.php and you got footer.include.php so since they're on the same level I can just put it straight in like so if they were let's say I had the include file inside another folder say was it called include I'd have to include that here like so we'll get into that a little bit later but anyhow so this is this this is it you just put the at symbol the keyword include and this you, of course, you got your brackets and you include the file name. And like any other PHP statement, you ended with the semicolon and we're ready to go. So I'm just going to save that. 
And now we're going to pop open the browser. We're going to take a look at the page. Here we go. It's, it's as uh, simple as you get. We got our footer. And let's just view the source, just to confirm things. Our text has been inserted. And as far as the people viewing your site are concerned, it was all part of the same page. Even though when we go back to the source code of my page, you notice that footer information is not there. We don't have any footer information. The footer information was inserted because of the include tag. Let's look at a couple of details about the include keyword here and well the include mechanism in PHP first of all you notice you got this little add symbol in front of it now there's a reason for this add symbol because you can use include or you can state it with the add symbol or you can remove the add symbol and if I, I just save the page and I'll just refresh and I'll go back and you notice our our line is still included our code has still been included so the add symbol has a very particular purpose and I'll show you what that is right now so let's change that. Now, underscore footer dot include that PHP does not exist. If you look here in the project files, there's no, no such file exists. Let's see what happens when we try and include a file that the PHP engine can't find. So we go back to the browser, include, and here we see is a warning. Now this text here is produced uh, automatically by the PHP engine. Essentially, it's a warning telling us that, A, we can't find that file. No such file or directory, right? So let's go back. Now let's include the at symbol. Save that. Reload the page. And as we can see, our warnings have disappeared. Now if we look into the source, no warning text, nothing at all. You probably guessed. The add symbol essentially tells the PHP engine that if an error should occur when trying to include the specified file, I should mention that you should put the specified file in the double quotes, of course. Anyway, if you have the add symbol, it tells the engine to suppress the error message. So if you want to make sure that your pages look decent and let's say you're including some non-essential part of the site, like the footer or something, and you just want to avoid showing error messages to your users, which is usually a good idea, you want to use the add symbol in front of the include. If, on the other hand, you want to make sure that whatever you're, you're trying to include is there and you want to make it obvious if it isn't, then you just want to delete the add symbol and do a simple include like this.